if you can step into the ice bath and you can do that, it's good for your body, good for your mind. Cool. Like what else in life are you not stepping into that you could just step into? Maybe be a little more intentional in your breathing and it's not as scary as you initially thought. And that's powerful. Are you curious about discovering ways of making your life better? Then welcome to my podcast. I'm Bob Nickman and this is The Exploding Human. Listen in while I talk with all kinds of people in the fields of personal growth, health and healing, alternative therapies, psychology, spirituality, environment, and the future. I'm looking for those answers that make life better for everyone. You'll meet cutting edge practitioners, doctors, artists, filmmakers, business people, and those who have overcome challenges. The brave, the curious, anyone who's out there helping us humans to explore, expand, and explode. Welcome to the show, The Exploding Human. I am Bob Nickman. Glad you're here. Glad you're listening in. That person you heard at the beginning is Kimmy Moss. And I did something uh, that I thought I would never do, an ice bath. An ice bath. And she was the person that talked me through it as I was doing the ice bath. And she uh, has these, uh, I don't know if you'd call it a seminar, a workshop, an event, three days a week. She does these ice baths. She's got a whole little crew over there at the uh, Deuce Gym, and it's ama- an amazing experience. And I wanna, I'm want i going to be telling you what it was like to uh, participate in that, and it was amazing. I'll just tell you that right now. And then we're going to talk about uh, what the physiological and psychological effects are of doing this ice bath. And there were psychological effects. We talk a little bit about how she got involved with this through... Uh, extreme performance training that she was doing in Hawaii with uh, big wave surfer Laird Hamilton and Gabrielle Reese, volleyball star, and uh, how they use uh, ice baths in their extreme performance training. And it's pretty amazing. And then we get into some uh, talk about what athletics really are. Some of the competitive stuff, but really more along the lines of the non-competitive idea of athletics. And, uh, ways that it can become a vehicle for uh, personal growth in all areas of life. So here it is, me and uh, Kimmy Moss. Kimmy, I'm so glad you're here. We're in the Santa Monica Public Library, my famous studio that I, I, oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, record, I record here a lot. <laughs> it's a great meeting place, and thank you so much for having me um, do the uh, breathing and, well, I call it an ice bath. You call it exposure. But it is an ice bath, so yeah. The program's just called Breath and Exposure. Breath and Exposure. And that was super cool to have you, so. Thank you. My pleasure. uh, I I didn't know what to expect. (laughs) I want to thank Mark Osborne uh, right out of the gate because he turned me on to this this whole thing. And, um, all right, going from a hot sauna, 100 and how many degrees? So when you guys first got in there, it was probably like 190, 180, but it gets up to 220, 230 degrees. Damn. Yeah. It was hot. You're roasting. And then somebody was, you know, throwing water on the thing. <laughs> yeah. And so it was getting hotter. More steam. And yeah. uh, so I was soaked. And then I come out and I get in this ice bath. And it's a tub to explain it to the people listening. Let's I, be real. It's a cattle field, cattle feed steel tank. That's yeah. what it is. That's yes. what it is. That, I knew it. A hundred gallon. A hundred gallon steel tank filled with ice and water. Yes. <laughs> like a cold ice drink. Hundred. There's probably 200 pounds of ice in what you got in. Yeah. And you said to me, go under really fast, mm-hmm. put your head under, and then come up, mm-hmm. which I did. <laughs> you did great. Yeah. <laughs> <And>, thank you. <laughs> And then I couldn't... It's like, bre- Bob's still here. He's not dead. So, I, yeah. all right. <laughs> well, that was the first thing I was wondering, because yeah. I, I, you always hear about old guys jumping in pools and having heart attacks, diving. I mean, it's, yeah, people, anyone's scared. Not even old, young, whatever the age, people are scared. Like, but, could I get a heart attack? And right. It's like, no. I mean, you're safe. You're well, safe. Yeah. So the first thing that happened was I had trouble, and you talked me through it. Mm-hmm. I had trouble catching my breath yeah well explain what it's like when you first dunk in 
because it's like it's like the ocean and part of the reason that you dunk all the way first and when we say dunk i mean like plug your nose your entire head yeah whole body submerged uh it, it's kind of like the ocean because if you just like step in and then the wave like hits your belly button then it hits like your armpit you're like oh yeah. it's so cold if you just dive in it's like <gasps> you know right. but your breath was i mean you tell yeah well L- let me just go back up a little yeah. bit because we did some breathing exercises oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. first yeah. to kind of tune in to the breath and slowed the mind down a little bit, mm-hmm. a little like meditation, of course, you know. So, uh, and then when I got in the water, I was like, oh, I can't breathe for a mm-hmm, second. Mm-hmm. And I was like, is this going to just steal my breath? And then you said, just breathe into your nose and hold it for like a second mm-hmm. and then slowly out of your mouth like a tss. Mm-hmm. A hiss out through the teeth. And that slowed it down. And I started to really um, enjoy it. Uh, it, it, it. My extremities were uh, much more um, affected. I could feel like almost pain so a little For bit sure. in the hands and the feet mm-hmm. mostly a little bit, but not in the center of my body. That felt amazing. And like that is, I mean, it's just so cool too, because we met just through like, you know, Mark came to a seminar. I uh, I met him at Soho House. He knows Logan, the owner of the gym, came to a breath and exposure seminar. I was like, hey, I think you should talk to my bo- my friend Bob. And I'm like, oh, we're not doing a podcast until I get Bob in the heat and the ice. That's right. And what you just <laughs> described right there is really cool because uh, breath and exposure, you know, and we can go all into the science and Yeah, and let's whatnot. do some of that too because yeah. I'm, I'm curious to see what is actually affected. So. Well, it's cool because as soon as you said uh, it's kind of like meditation, right, when we were breathing, uh, it wasn't a trigger, but for me it's always interesting because the experience that is breath and exposure encompasses breath work. It's very intentional to bring your state up and down and then uh, the sauna and the ice and it's cool that it's kind of like life lessons, right? Like we're all getting it to a certain extent, the same, uh, you know, these like archetypes, these lessons, but there's like different ways of getting there. So Mm. your jargon or other people's vocabulary to describe that some people it's like, Oh, you know, this is like blissful or this is, this is like yoga. This is like meditation. This is like, uh, mindfulness. This is like consciousness. And I'm like, it's whatever you want to describe it as. Uh, essentially, what we're getting at is altering your state using these practices. That's kind of unconventional, but also like what's more um, pure and natural than breathing? Really cold exposure, really hot exposure. And, uh, and when people realize that um, they are more in control of their state, even in the stressful environment of the heat or the ice, you're like, oh my gosh, breath work is essentially, uh, I have a dial here. I'm in, this is a remote control for how I want to feel. And in the most like simple terms, it's do I want to be more uh, alert, focused, you know, ready to go in this like sympathetic fight or flight, or do I want to be more uh, relaxed, rest and digest, parasympathetic. And so if you like put breath work on uh, essentially like what are the states that we're getting to, the way you feel, you can put it on this large spectrum of it's either fight or flight, the sympathetic or the rest and digest, the parasympathetic. And, uh, I get so excited. So I know I've like been going on a, been going on a run for a while here, but essentially, you know, this is like life too. And, uh, there's, there's two sides or more of anything. And so sympathetic isn't better or worse than parasympathetic and parasympathetic isn't better or worse than that. But are we aware of how, uh, being on one side could be a little more useful than the other in any given scenario. And so the, one of the best ways I've actually um, heard in the last little piece I'll share here is considering do I want to be more alert or do I want to be more relaxed in terms of imagine you're driving down a gravel road. Sometimes it's better to hit the gas and it doesn't feel so, you know, like, you know what it's like when you've been in a gravel road and yeah. you just kind of that like unease. It feels better to hit the gas more sympathetic, upregulate. Other times it feels better to take your foot off the gas, go a little slower, more parasympathetic. There's no right or wrong, but in any given situation, are you in control of how you can go up or down? I I realized, and it gave me a lot of confidence when I got out, was I can control how I'm reacting to this very shocking 
temperature difference. Yes. And it's not, um, it's not going to hurt me. Right. I'm just, and I'm getting help, which was really good because you mm-hmm. were talking me through it. And I started to, I started to go, I'm actually doing this thing. You're like, I'm sitting in an ice bath and I feel pretty good right now. Yeah, it was, it was an awesome thing. And then getting out, there was an energy that kind of, um, I felt like kind of giggling and laughing and I, the confidence level was, was enormous. Yes. Um, well, and physiologically there's things going on there. Tell me what. So when you exposed yourself to very cold water, and what I had you do was dunk all the way, three minutes, dunk again at the end. Yeah. And that was mid-30 degree Fahrenheit water with the ice there. So it's cold. So there's a term called hormesis, uh, minimal dosage for maximal benefit. It's kind of like medicine, right? Like if you take some antibiotics when you have an infection, it's going to help you feel better. You take too many antibiotics, uh, all of a sudden we have a problem. Or in surgery, right? You take like a little bit of whatever knocks you out. You take too much, uh, you're dead. <laughs> so, <Yeah. laughs> so with ice, we just need this like minimal dosage here. Now, that being said, there's like all these different ways we can scale it, get different feelings, sensations, all that. However, uh, with the three minutes that we're just kind of sticking at at this cold temperature, it activates cold shock proteins in your body that you wouldn't otherwise wake up or activate uh, if you didn't subject yourself to that cold of water um you get a massive hit of dopamine which would explain why you kind of have this feel good like giddy a lot of people start dancing i know i dance you know prance around also norepinephrine so you're like very like awake Uh, i feel good um and essentially your body has just gone through like a massive circulation boost uh even the fat in your body uh if you kind of like subject yourself to ice baths enough can become more brown fat, uh, which has more mitochondria in it, which means that you're burning more. And so essentially your metabolic flexibility, your ability to tap into your fat reserves as opposed to glycogen and just burning carbohydrate, uh, you're better at that. So essentially your body knows how to heat itself up using the fat in your body, which can burn off fat. You know, and so uh, in terms of like aesthetics and body composition, if you do uh, ice baths enough, it it wouldn't be a coincidence if you started leaning out or noticing that you were losing some fat on your body. You're a more like efficient, adaptable human being when you do things like the ice bath. So like physiologically, there's so many good things physically and mentally in your favor. Um, And then the other cool thing is you said, you know, I felt like confident. And yeah, when, that you, was the when you found thing that switch of it's so stressful to like, oh, I can control my breathing. No one did it for me. I did it just by being intentional. What a boost when you step into something that uncomfortable and you're able to successfully navigate out of it. So that's part of it as well. And then the other thing with breath work that, you know, in terms of like physiological for takeaways for anybody listening to this that's been like, I've done breath work before, I've never done breath work, or whatever. When you breathe in through your nose, you activate more parasympathetic tone. So that's that rest and digest. So in a stressful situation, the cue that your mom, your school teacher, everybody has always said of like, take a breath. Usually we hear take a breath and it's like, and I'm like shrugging my shoulders up, taking a breath into my chest more than my belly, my diaphragm. Yeah. It's like a sigh. Right. Like and a painful sigh. That's you know? not the most optimal breath. If mm-hmm. you breathe in through your nose, you increase parasympathetic tone, rest and digest. You also activate more diaphragmatic breathing, which is what we really want to be feeling when we breathe in. And when you lengthen your exhale, so when you're going because the teeth it's a nice way to control the exhale as opposed to you could just try it right now in through your nose out your mouth it's like it's been one second i blew all my air but if you you know like filter it it's just like the balloon does it go like or is it like you know all out at once uh lengthening your exhale also increases parasympathetic tone and the cool thing about that is like you're sitting in a goddamn ice tub (laughs) You're freezing, but just through your breath, you're able to calm down. And so my thing is, 
you know, and I get so excited, so I have to jump ahead to this already, is if you can step into the ice bath and you can do that, it's good for your body, good for your mind, cool. Like, what else in life are you not stepping into that you could just step into? Maybe be a little more intentional in your breathing and it's not as scary as you initially thought. Mm -hmm. And that's powerful. When I think about maybe things I say to myself, like, well, I can't do that because... You know, and I don't know what the because is, you know, or I make up a because. Right. I like taking chances in certain areas, you know. And it uh, feels good. And that was a great experience for me. You know, I've done a lot of, that's one of the reasons I started the podcast. I've done a lot of experimenting with body, mind, spirit kind yeah. of um, things. And that's why I learn a lot from people. So I'm, I, I, I like to think I'm courageous that yes. way. That way. But I... But courage doesn't mean you're not scared because I was, I was kind of scared. And then a couple of people that's told me. That's a great point. Yeah. That's told normal. me there. They said, oh, I was really scared before I did this. Uh, the other people that were there. Yeah. It's normal. Yeah. And, and there's like so many things going on here that I think is just fascinating. Because at the end of the day, this is, you know, this is ice and heat. This is coaching. This is whatever training. But this is like sociology. This is like understanding people. And we're hardwired to like you get in cold water. Uh, yeah, you need to get out because this is a threat. If you stay in too long, you could die. Yeah. You know? uh, however, that's the cool thing about the community that we've built around it is uh, you're not in this alone. That uh, hearing from other people the first time I got in, this is how I felt. Let me tell you something right now. I've seen hundreds of people now. I have coached hundreds of people go through the ice bath. And the number of people who on their first ice exposure go in and are cool as a cucumber is like less than 1%. I would imagine. Everyone gets in and I'm like, are you a human? Are you, do you have a heartbeat if you get in and you're not like, (gasps) yeah. the first time I got in, I was in Hawaii. This is February of 2018 at an XPT experience. What's that mean? XPT extreme performance training. Okay. And that's what really um, set me into this world. I was just curious, found out about it, said, uh, I need to go do that. And Laird Hamilton, big wave surfer. I know exactly who that is. His wife, Gabby Reese, also a phenomenal athlete, but now just an incredible human businesswoman. Um, The two of them started XPT, which is essentially breath, movement, recovery, three kind of pillars of that. Mm -hmm. And there's an emphasis on, you know, the the market is saturated in movement practices, whether it's CrossFit, you know, general physical preparedness, there's, you know, there's running, there's all these races, whatever. Um, But what they were bringing to the table with this program, XPT, is also the breath work as a necessary pillar of health and fitness and also recovery, so the ice and the heat sauna um also as part of the fitness training and it was like the biggest wake-up call in the world to me of like oh my god there's more to it than just going hard in the gym lifting more weight sprinting faster sprinting longer doing all these things but like are we taking care of our body with ice and the heat uh these things that i i never would have known i would feel this way with that and so you know, all of this started because I was like, I need to share this. But the first time I got in the ice bath to close that loop, I was like, oh, I can't breathe. <laughs> okay, so I'm not alone. <laughs> I can't breathe. I grabbed the wrist of, I think, a coach who was next to me. I pulled them down and was like, can you talk to me? Because there's something about, like, see me when I'm in the tub and I'm scared. Like, see me. Talk to me. Yes. And it's so helpful, you know, to have that community component as well. Well, I felt like when I got on the ice, I kept my eyes closed because I couldn't open them. But you were talking to me, but I had the feeling, and I don't know, Mm because my eyes were closed, that other people were watching because it was my first time. And and I know Logan was watching because he took my picture. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, which I I was excited to send later. Like, show these to your wife. Show these to (laughs) your wife. She loved it. Look, I did it, you know? (laughs) Yeah, yeah. That extreme performance training, so has that made you a better athlete or improved your performance? That's an interesting question. If, If athlete is universal... Am I uh, more capable in a wider variety of, um, you know, experiences, challenges, whatever? Absolutely, yes. My first response to that is actually it's made me a better 
human. Like it's made me a better person. And I say that because I was a competitive soccer player my whole life. Played mm-hmm. Division One college soccer uh, in Virginia, George Mason University. I was that crazy who uh, was on like multiple teams growing up of like Olympic development program, you know, summer league teams, extra competitive, always traveling. I'm talking from the time I was like eight years old. I was on a travel team. I mean, I still remember the first soccer game I played in at like five and I scored like you know, four goals. One was called back. Apparently, allegedly I was offsides. No, I'm five years old. I'm not offsides. <laughs> you know, it was like my friend's dad still was the referee. <laughs> still bothers me. I still, I'm intense though, Yeah. you know, and, uh, also ran college track my sophomore year. I was like, I'm going to do this in the off season. I've always been that go, 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 go and successful. But it wasn't until XPT that, uh, the emphasis wasn't even so much as, am I a better athlete now? But it was like, am I a better person in all the times that I'm not on the soccer field or that I'm not training in the gym or that I'm not on a run? Mm -hmm. Because those things are awesome and great. And I'm glad that like it was my life and I was so fixed on that for so long. But it came at a price of shutting out a lot of other parts of my life. You know, so I remember being on family vacations and I'm like, "Uh, guys, I got to run. I got to do my conditioning. And, and I was just hardwired like this for forever. But it's it's the point at which you go, cool, it's great to be a great athlete, run a faster mile, l- have a heavier back squat, do all that. Um, but, like, what am I talking about when I step off the soccer field or out of the gym? Am I still talking about that game and, like, how I crushed it or how <laughs> I crushed that weight or how I beat that? Like, what what game am I really playing here? Uh, are my eyes open to the rest of the world? You know, can I go hiking and appreciate it in terms of I'm connecting to nature. I'm moving, moving feels good to me. Always innately intuitively has for, you know, everybody else as well. Who's ever looked at a sunset or a sunrise and been like, yeah, that's not for me. You know, like there's something just beautiful about it. Yeah. It sounds like it brought you from a singular focus of competitiveness right into a a more holistic view of the world where that's just a piece of your life and not the whole thing. There is something about, uh, these practices and exposure that I think centers people. That's how I felt. And for me, I'm like, cool. Now's an opportunity to create a culture around it where we can all kind of hit that refresh button on ourselves, experience it together, because we're not all alone. It's not all about like, oh, I did a three-minute ice bath. Check out this picture of me. All of you can, you know, suck it. No, <laughs> <Right>. like it's <laughs> like I that's, win. <laughs> that's that's the low-hanging fruit. This is, hey, we all just like shared something together. That's powerful. And uh, now we can go about our day because we've taken care of ourselves and we've kind of honored ourselves and each other in the process. That's the culture I want to build. The time in the ice. Mm-hmm. Is there an ideal time? Does it, do people increase it for different reasons? What if I stayed in, you know, six minutes? Would I hallucinate? What would happen? Uh, how does that work as people start to freeze? <laughs> right. Well, I'm proud to say I have done my own guinea pigging for this for a very long time. Uh, and essentially, just like we talked about before, there's physical things going on. There's also mental things going on. Uh, And now this is all we're almost going to channel into. I've learned what I've learned through XPT, uh, through another company called Power Speed Endurance, their art of breath. There's a book called The Oxygen Advantage by Patrick McEwen, uh, who's also an XPT advisor. Totally recommend that that book to anyone who's like breathing, you know, like I want to learn more uh, just on a very basic fundamental level, but get all the science of it as well. Mm -hmm. So essentially we're getting it like, okay. Physiologically, physically, all these things are happening. Uh, Mentally, in terms of like, you know, my cognitive ability, how is this changing here? So I have experimented a little bit more because there's only so much out there that uh, there's more to ice baths than three minutes at 33 to, you know, 37 degrees Fahrenheit. And what I've found, and this is more like anecdotal and based on the people that I'm with, and now as I'm building this breath and exposure program, actually write uh, programming of breath work three times a week. So we're testing things. We're starting to test, you know, like CO2 tolerance, your carbon dioxide tolerance through a couple different tests there, your heart rate, your, you know, all these like different measurements that we can actually compare this now, have some data. 
And uh, what I found is if you go in a slightly warmer bath, and it's kind of funny to say warmer, because I mean, like, instead of, you know, 35 degrees, we're talking 45 degrees or 50 degrees. Mm -hmm. And you sit in a 50 degree ice bath or cold water immersion for 10 minutes. Wow. That's a different feeling than uh, the three minutes very cold. And you can go even colder. You know, we joke around. Now we have all this ice bath jargon that's like, oh, we got an ice comforter here. Is it just an ice blanket or is it an ice comforter? You know, <laughs> are there any ice cubes? Like, is, is it a slushy today? Is it, you know, there's just, and we have fun with it. Uh, I have found that there's something really nice in terms of your um, kind of mental state and, and how like peaceful and clarity and, and it's like a softer it's a softer intensity, but it's like a, you know, when you do 10 minutes at 50 degrees. And if you, uh, instead of doing three minutes, were to dunk in very cold, get out, and then less than a minute later, get back in, dunk again. Like this is Kimmy's now conjugate mixed methods of, of ice bathing. This is not XBT, but like let's start a conga line. And we have done that where you get in and the next person gets in, the next person gets in, you cycle back, you do that three to five times. You are dialed up. Like I, my head's going to explode. I feel amazing right now. Am I on something right now? Uh, <laughs> and this is all, this is all ice, right? So I'm essentially saying I want us to look at the ice bath and even the sauna. You can go in when it's 230 degrees, 220 degrees. You can go for 15 minutes there. Or you can go at like 170 to 190 for 30 minutes. You know, you can get out in ice. You can get out and shower, come back in, stay in for 30 minutes straight at 200 degrees. Good luck with that. <laughs> you know, like there's all these different things we can do to achieve different states. Also doing different things in your body. And uh, this is fun. Now, I, I like to say like my metaphor or analogy is we're cooking, Okay. Or we're making a different cup of coffee, you know, for the ice. Do you want it to be the shot of espresso? Maybe it's a dunk, very, very cold ice. Okay, cool. Maybe it's a three minute, you know, that's your standard like uh, pour over. Okay, that's your French press. Maybe uh, you don't want something as intense, but something that feels sweet to you. Okay, now that, that 10 minute ice bath, that's the latte. You know, like we have all these different things and are you aware of this toolkit you have, this variety that you have at your discretion? So I love that you're guinea pigging yourself to figure oh, for out sure. what happened. I've sat in for 10 minutes before. Yeah, and with what happened? With 10 buckets, which is like each bucket is about 20 pounds of ice. This is on a 100 gallon tank. Uh, so that is cold. <laughs> uh, what happened was that I didn't warm back up for three hours. <laughs> we didn't have the sauna yet at this point. Uh, I felt electric when I got out. I'm running around the yard. This is at Deuce Gym. You yeah. know, you've seen the outdoor part. And I'm just like cacawing like a bird and just like, <gasps> oh my gosh. I start dancing. I'm giddy. Everybody's looking at me like I have seven heads. They do, you know, they get in for an ice bath. They do the same thing. But, but the point isn't so much to like say that I did more in the ice because I'm not impressed by that. Did you achieve the state that you were moving towards? Yeah. And so when you're familiar enough with the ice, it becomes restraint and discipline because like you could eat six glazed donuts right now, you know, but maybe after one or two, you're starting to feel a little sick. And <laughs> is it worth it for that short term? <gasps> yes. No, it is not. Well, obviously. Same, th it's same a thing good with analogy. the ice. Mm -hmm. You know, do you want to be shivering for three hours with blue <laughs> lips? I've been there many times. <laughs> Uh, no, I don't. <laughs> right? Or even um, you cycled back from, from the ice to the sauna. You know, in the sauna, there's heat shock proteins. Again, similar to the ice activating things in your body that you wouldn't get unless you went to that cold of an extreme. Same thing with, with the sauna. You know, it's great for, like, flushing our system. Uh, actually boosts testosterone as well, both the ice and the heat. But there's heat shock proteins. And... You know, the cycling back, what you have to understand is like the ice and the sauna are both stress as well. Just like if you were to do a lot of squats or run or all that. And as good as it feels to cycle back and forth two times and you go, oh, I could do this five times. Okay, well, you're going to be napping by noon. 
you know, or you're, you're not going to get much done because you're zapping, you're blowing all your bullets right now. Yeah, I get that. I, I was very relaxed that night. Yes. But I couldn't, I'm glad I didn't do more. Just exactly. Because I, I, you're right. I would have conked out. Exactly. And so your body's it's working overtime in those situations. Sure. You can feel it. For sure. For sure. So here's, I want to say, two, I want to say two things. The first thing is when you were talking about doing too much mm-hmm. or, you know, what are we getting out of it? I was remembering when you mentioned Laird Hamilton and I saw uh, whatever that movie was, I want to say Riding Giants. <laughs> and he said something that I've always remembered, which is the best surfer is the one who's having the most fun. Yes. Oh, that's awesome. And I. That's so him. Yeah, I just, I mean, I, you know, I was just like, that makes so much sense. And here's the guy who's, you know, one of the best surfers. If you wanted to do competitive Absolutely. surfing, he's the guy. But that statement, I was like, that really, I, I love that. Because it, it really says, why am I doing the thing that I'm doing? Is it competitive or is it to feel really good? Yes. And he, and to hear a guy of that uh, stature in that world say that, was really important to me. That's, that, that that's so cool that you bring that up because, and I've gotten to know them way better as well through XPT. They're like the family I wasn't born to. Mm. Uh, I lived with them for nine months. I just recently moved, moved to Santa Monica, oh. but I, I met them through XPT connected with them. That lesson right there of like, who's having the most fun. Uh, I have, I had never heard you know, the, the framing or the, the guidance that from a high level performer athlete, because it's one thing if it's like, you know, your JV soccer coach, who's just like, you know, it's the person who's having the most fun. Granted, the statement is still true, but when it comes from someone with the credibility of a Laird Hamilton, who has surfed hundred foot waves, who's one of the most prolific, you know, big wave surfers in the world ever to say, are you having fun? And, and when I connected with him at XPT to say, are you honoring, you know, what's inside? Or do you feel like you're playing part of a larger game here? Mm. And so now this, you know, just the philosophy of that was powerful. Yes. And I said, yes. And, and even moving away from soccer, which I had been coaching for a decade and had played and, you know, prior to this breath and exposure, I remember sharing with Laird and Gabby at an XPT, another experience that I went to in Miami, and this is of last year, and saying, uh, you know, I just feel like I could move to California. I just, I want to move to California. I left Hawaii, and I felt like I was more at peace with my life than I ever had been before. And there's always been the balance, and this is for everyone. It's not unique to me, but I've been, you know, very aware of it, of, like, you have the drive to be better that, like, it doesn't wake me up at night usually you know but it's like embedded in me I want to be better I want to evolve well on the other side of that I also would like to enjoy and savor the peace of any given moment Mm. at any given moment and for him to say yeah you know you just there's something to be said for being healthy enough that you're tuned into am I doing what I feel compelled to do I think it's good to test yourself and try something that you, that you you may not be good at. I was telling Logan in the sauna. I know he's an athlete. He's a, a yeah. Uh, he was a what, baseball player. He was a pro baseball player. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I don't know why I said this to him. I said uh, I've always been intimidated by athletes, real athletes. Um, and he goes, "Why?" And I said, it's "Just the way I came up. It was sort of." You know, I wasn't a- super athletic. I'm small. I wasn't great at it. I was okay, mm-hmm. you know, as a kid. And then I got into other stuff. But it was almost like, um, here's people that can do something I can't do. And it was also, uh, you know, kind of like a tail end hippie. So it was jocks versus hippies when I was in high school. Okay. And there was a lot of that sort of uh, extra testosterone kind of coach mentality right, that really right. pissed me off and annoyed me but it also intimidated me because it was very heavy you know macho stuff which i'm not i said but it's bullshit i go because when i actually meet somebody like yourself you're not that guy no you're a very nice person and there's a lot of um there's a lot of pluses to athleticism that isn't necessarily competitive or bullying or or even physical yeah Exactly. So I go, it's my own head that I've told myself this. 
which is why I'm sort of telling you now because I know it's bullshit. Well, but likewise, th- there could be on the other side of it, uh, someone who's been in a sports world for a long time and they have essentially, you know, deemed people better or worse based on athleticism. Yeah. And I'm here to say, <laughs> yo, I've been a very competitive athlete and I still to this day choose to be because I like to go intense, but like that's bullshit too, you know? And, uh, what's cool about the breath and exposure and especially the, the time that you came and we had a, you know, variety of people. And it is like that on the regular is that like, I like to think, and you know, maybe this is my own ego as well, but like we're changing the game a little bit because this is open for everyone who's willing to go there. Yeah. And that's cool. That, you know, that unites people because the talk in the sauna can be about, sports and can also be about anything and everything we, we were talking about uh, you guys were and then i was listening to you talking about the origins of the universe oh yeah <laughs> it got real deep yeah. it always it always <laughs> ends up getting like philosophical where, where, or where, yeah. where's the universe heading or yes. expansions and <laughs> right you know they don't what? call it the truth barrel for no reason <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah you know and and the cool it's thing like, is like Okay. Yeah, just that kind of exposure, literally to the heat. It it just I think it strips away the bullshit. And even the gym itself, as I was walking through, it was all different body types. Yeah, it wasn't I? I thought because I saw these giant tires, I go, "There's going to be the you know, like, what do people pull on those or something?" Yank they them lift them, they flip them over. Okay, they're huge. They're like tractor tires. Oh yeah. Um, and they weren't using them when I was there, but I was like, what do they do with this? And I'm like, this has got a torture device. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'm thinking like, who's coming in here? Like mm-hmm. the strongest people in the world. But then I'm looking at the people and it was all different sizes and shapes and ages. But it just speaks also to you are willing to come, you know, and I think anyone who and I also learned this through XPT with Laird and Gabby of like, if you're curious and you are willing to uh act on that curiosity to learn more not just think about it because anybody can think about it speak about it whatever i have this little side project called rhetoric and motion that i hope to like write as a book someday but it's essentially my play on like you can think all of these things and speak all these things but are you acting on them you know and again like not to go back to the way beginning but these are all streams going into the same river of the same lesson, just spoken a different way. Mm. But if, if people are interested and curious and willing to say, hey, Kimmy, I don't even know you, but I'm going to do this ice and heat with you, you're rewarded for it. And it's not even about me, but it's like you did an incredible thing. You got into a freezing cold ice tub with people you never knew before, uh, walked out of it like, oh, my gosh, that was incredible. Uh, and you wouldn't have gotten that experience if you didn't try. Now, it could have been horrible, but at least you could have said, I did that thing. Yeah. And aren't we all rewarded for, like, acting on our curiosity? And there's a lot to be said for effort. And to take out the result. Just do the effort part. Yeah. Which I was, that's, you know, where I sort of landed in my life. Like, I give it some effort. See what happens. You know, you'll, you might be surprised. Well, you'll always be surprised. Right. Whether... It's success or failure if there is such a thing as either one of those. Uh, who cares? And that's right? like, I think that's like a gift too. That's one of my favorite things. Uh, what a nice feeling to be like surprised, you know? So on my way back to the car, which was about, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes after I did the, the ice bath. Okay. Felt light and good. And, and then this emotion started to come from my throat and my chest, like sadness tears almost i didn't cry because you know i pushed it back down (laughs) yeah yeah it felt raw yeah and i was like oh uh, this is an interesting part of my body that's trying to now now it's trying to release emotion and i'm yeah now and i'm as i'm talking about it i'm feeling it you're feeling it yeah my throat right now but you know what i think is so cool (laughs) about that is like these are the conversations that i I thoroughly enjoy and, and ice heat, you know, like it doesn't have to be ice and heat, but like we're stripping everything, you know, there's no like, Bob, I need you to be like strong right now. Or like, Bob, I need you to be like bravado. It's like, these are my favorite conversations. Uh, these are the people I want to be around because guess what? Life is messy and that's, that's beautiful. 
I don't want to be behind the screen. I want to like be in, in the game, in the, in the, in the picture instead yeah. of just observing it more. And uh, yes, I like to step back and reflect, but uh, that's why I really seek out conversations and environments that are intense, all encompassing, just like, let's go there. One thing that I have come to is like, I'm a fireball and I am best uh, seen in terms of my impact upon others. But if I'm just alone by myself, like mm -hmm. I'm going to burn myself. <laughs> and and Gabby actually described me. It was the first time I ever heard this as high voltage. Yeah. And she's like, okay. layered, same thing. And I'm like, I get that. High voltage. Okay. And she goes, you just got to figure out what it is that helps you, you know, live in your own skin without having that angst. Like imagine the dog that hasn't gone for a walk, hasn't run around yeah. outside. It's all pent up, whatever. Right. There's an energy expenditure that I need to expend on any given day. Um, and what's beautiful about the ice is it's just an intensity that I'm like, okay, we, <laughs> we fed that beast for today, you know, but it's never permanent. I got to come back the next day or a little bit longer. It's so cool though. I, wh where do you, uh, where do you see this going? It's definitely, I have goals to grow it beyond my own ability to coach it. And that has taken me years to come to. And this is where, uh, credit to Logan, the owner of Deuce, started Deuce, uh, who's been an incredible mentor, friend to me, is like, how do we grow to the next level here? How do you coach coaches to offer what you've done? Are mm. you open to that, that they could even coach how you're coaching better than you at some point? <laughs> and that's terrifying because my ego goes, oh, you know, yeah. anyone doing breath and exposure better be delivering it with some sass, have some <laughs> comedy, have fun with it, remind people, keep it real. And this is where Logan's been such a great influence. And it's kind of like I'm sitting in fertile soil at Deuce Gym because I would like to grow breath and exposure that I uh, help grow other gyms to also have a sauna and ice bath facility and breath work and, and integrate that with their conventional training or unconventional based on who's observing it. Yeah. Make this a normal thing because pumping iron in the gym, great. But there's another muscle that we need to flex and tend to, mm -hmm. which is this exposure and breath work. And, and wow, what that can do to offer, you know, this, this whole toolkit, this like holistic approach to our fitness, but also just being a human. I would like to be able to say by the end of next year, that I don't just offer breath and exposure seminars at, at Deuce anymore, but also, uh, well, I mean, this month I'm actually going to do one in Virginia, uh, that I've also done one in Florida and Texas and New York. And I've, and I've gone across and that also I'm offering programs so that gyms who are interested in this mm -hmm. have access to, Hey, here are the resources. I'm going to take you through technically step-by-step step what you need. Um, from a tactical standpoint, this is what programming looks like when you're trying to pair it what, with what you already have. Because I know what that gym culture is like. It's like, oh, look at me, you know, and yeah, you know well, how many pull-ups I can do. And, <laughs> and I go, okay, I need to serve you a dose of keeping it real without, without knocking into you too far. Because I don't need to make someone feel small. Like, oh, you can deadlift 600 pounds, but you can't sit in the ice bath. We don't need that either. No animosity. Right. Mm -hmm. But can I bring them in a way that's fun um, and grow that community? So I would like to do that there. And, and what is the most like mega version of all of this? Uh, and this is more like where do I hope to grow? Not just breath and exposure of like breath and exposure someday. This is the biggest dream. I would love to be able to say that it's part of a normal routine uh, at a school that I've created. I love that. That's that's the like pinnacle of it for me. Thank you so much for coming on the on the podcast. A delightful guest and uh, a delightful person. And if you are in Venice, California, go to the Deuce Gym, right. 110 Lincoln Boulevard. And uh, I was there. It's a great place. And check out the ice bath. And I look forward to getting uh, frozen again. Yes, uh, soon. Soon. Nice.